So if you know anything about me and my channel, then you're probably aware that I'm quite privy to a little spot of sweet picking every now and then. <laughs> Now, if you're unfamiliar with the technique of sweep picking, then let me give you a quick rundown. Sweeping is a guitar technique which involves playing notes on consecutive strings in one singular sweeping motion from the picking hand. The result is a fluid, cascading sound of ascending and descending patterns. So let's begin by taking a look at your picking hand first and what that should be doing. Now, I know many guitarists like to switch up their picking grip a little bit when they switch into sweeping mode. I find that with my good old regular pick grip, I don't need to switch. Like, I can use this for sweeping just fine. But this is going to be very personal and all depend on what you find most comfortable. So I reckon, as a starting point, just try sweeping with your regular picking grip and see how you get on. If you can get good results with your regular grip, then great, awesome. But if not, that's gonna have to be something you'll need to address. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start off by showing you what my personal pit grip is, what works for me. And maybe if you're having trouble sweeping with your personal pit grip, then feel free to copy mine because I know for sure that this works. <laughs> Okay, so for hand placement, I nearly always have my picking hand sort of anchored or floating around this sort of area here, just behind the bridge pickup. So sort of like in between the bridge pickup and the bridge itself. Regardless of what I'm doing, it's nearly always in this area, okay? Whether I'm riffing, or soloing, all right, sweeping, it's nearly always around this sort of area, okay? And from what I gather, it's nearly always anchored to the bottom string. Obviously, if I need to use the bottom string, then I'll move it. It's sort of like a little safe zone. I seem to always gravitate back here. It's just where it's most comfortable for me. So have a look while I'm sweeping, and you'll see that my hand very much stays anchored around this point. And when I need to use the bottom string, for example, like doing a, a sweep that starts right on the bottom, then I'm sort of like just moving it back a little bit. So still keeping it parallel to where I usually am, but I'm just sort of moving it back a bit like off the string so there's no unwanted noise, like so. And you see once I've gone further up, my hand is back in the safe zone. But like I said before, try this lesson starting with your usual pick grip, and if you'll find it's not really working, then feel free to try mine. Now, by far the hardest part of learning sweep picking is getting the hand synchronization nailed, which basically just means ensuring that your hands are moving together in tandem. So you're not really thinking about what this hand's doing individually or what this hand's doing individually. You're thinking about them together as one unit that moves in synchrony. I'm just gonna play some random sweeps now that are very sort of like stop and starty, and you'll see how very much locked in together my hands are, okay? <laughs> You can see there how they're moving exactly as one unit and neither one hand is sort of like lagging behind the other. Nine times out of ten when you hear somebody who's a bit messy with sweep picking, it's simply because they haven't practiced their hand synchronization enough. You can just hear the first note and the last note and everything in between is just like a blur. I've practiced sweeping so much it's kind of hard to play desynchronized on purpose. This happens because it's pretty easy to get started with sweeping and like nail the, you know, the, the, the sweeping motion in the picking hand. But the hard part is grinding away at the hand synchronization and a lot of people just don't spend enough time on that. So you get people who are like starting out and they, you know, they can do this really fast, but like, you know, their, their left hand is sort of like lagging behind a bit. But what you want to be aiming for is a nice, clear, crisp sound where every note is as audible as the last. So enough yapping, let's get playing. For our first exercise, we're going to aim to sweep a C major arpeggio over two octaves, both up and down.
But instead of charging in all guns blazing, we're going to break things right down and take a look at each hand one at a time. Starting off with the picking hand. So I warn you in advance, this is going to be excruciatingly boring, you know? I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it. It's very, very dull. But it is so, so important that you spend the time on nailing the picking hand motion. That otherwise, you know, it's just not going to work. You can't sweep if, uh, you know, you can't sweep. What can I say? So take your picking hand and place it as though you're about to pick the open A string, like this. Then we're going to play each open string above it in sequence, but in one continuous motion, like this. Resist the urge to lift the pick up after each note like you normally would, and instead just keep dragging the pick down the strings. Notice how my picking hand pretty much just stays anchored in my usual spot. And then curves ever so slightly on the top strings. So you get this sort of motion. Once you're comfortable with that motion, we can add the descent too. So after you've picked the high E string up the top, you want to turn around and do the exact same thing the other way around, like so. So all in all, it goes down, 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 up, 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 up. The aim of the game is to get all of your pick strokes nice and consistent, not like this. Right, so that's the picking hand out of the way. Now on to the fretting hand. So this is going to be a little weird, but to start with, we're going to practice our arpeggio without actually picking it, okay? This is because I want you to get that muscle memory in your fretting hand without having to worry about what's going on in your picking hand. So the fingering for the arpeggio looks like this. We start off on the 15th fret on the A string with our third finger. Then the 14th fret on the D string with our second finger. Then the 12th fret on the G string with our first finger. Then the 13th fret on the B string with our second finger. Then the 12th fret on the E string with our first finger. Then we hammer on to the 15th fret with our third finger. And then pull off again, back to the 12. And then back down, we have 13th fret on the B with our second finger. 12th fret on the G string with our first, 14th on the D with our second, and then finally finishing where we started on the 15th fret on the A string with our third finger. Part of the learning curve here will be sort of getting a feel for how hard you need to press down on each fret, because it requires, you know, a moderate amount of finger strength, but not massive amounts. You don't have to really slam it down as hard as you can. Just try and find that nice middle ground where you get a nice clear note, but you're not like, you know, really pushing your fingers too hard. And sweeping aside, this is just an amazing exercise to build hand strength in itself, which is a super important underrated skill. The more strength your fretting hand has, then, you know, just the easier your life will be in guitar playing in general. So once you're happy with both of those exercises, then it's time to start putting it all together. So get both of your hands into their respective starting positions. So here and here, and then start slowly ascending note by note. Start by going as far as the 12th fret on the E string, and then stop, and then return to your starting position, and then come back down. Ensure that every single note is nice and crisp, clear, and evenly spaced. It's super important on your fretting hand that when you play your new note, your old one comes off at exactly the same time. So just imagine they're sort of like doing that, yeah? They're alternating. There shouldn't be any overlap because if there's overlap, then that's when you're gonna get unwanted noise and strings ringing out and stuff, okay? So we play our first note. 
And then when we go to the second one, see? A previous note comes up straight away. What you should be able to hear is just two individual notes separate of each other. They shouldn't be ringing out like this. It shouldn't sound like that. It shouldn't sound like you're playing a chord, okay? It should sound like you're playing a series of individual notes. Okay, so once you're happy with going that far, we can do the descent. So after you've just played your uh, high E notes at the top, turn the pick the other way around so you're ready to come up with an upstroke. Then you're gonna play the 15th fret on the high E string, and then pull off to 12, okay? You're not gonna pick both. You're not doing that. You're pulling off in one motion. Your pick is just gonna wait there patiently poised on the B string while that pull off finishes, okay? So again, you go like this. Upstroke, pull off, while your pick waits there, okay? And then the rest is just simple. It's just coming back up with upstrokes. Okay, so again, slowly, it's upstroke, pull off, and then B string, G string, D string, A string, and we finish, okay? So in total, we have this. Down, 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 up, pull off, up, 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 up. By far, the trickiest part of this exercise will be the coordination required between your two hands the, uh, at the top bit here with the pull-off. Because I guarantee when you first start practicing this, your picking hand is going to want to raise the head while the pull-off's happening, yeah? Because your brain's going to start thinking, okay, so every time a string is played, I need to move on to the next string, yeah? So it might take a while for your brain to just, oh. Yeah, okay, I need to actually hang on here and wait for the next note. So I'm going to sound like a super cliche guitar teacher here, but it really is very important that you drill this properly to build the muscle memory. Once you build a muscle memory, then yeah, that's when you can start building speed. But you have to get the motions like locked in first before you can race ahead. So my main advice for you, student out there, is to just mindlessly, mindlessly drill this thing over and over again while you're watching TV, sitting on the toilet, uh, sitting at your desk waiting for something to load, whatever. Just sit there and just be like... over and over again. Just keep going and keep going until you drive yourself to the edge of absolute insanity. Everyone's slamming on your door telling you to shut the hell up. Play something else! But, uh, but no, just keep at it and eventually it will just click and the muscle memory will be locked in forever. You know, once that muscle memory is there, it's very, very hard to like detangle it. So this was obviously a very, very basic lesson in sweet picking fundamentals. We're gonna be going way, way further in future lessons. And I'm gonna be showing you some really cool tricks you can use to turbocharge your sweeping speeds to like light speed and beyond. If you enjoyed this introductory lesson and would like to continue your sweeping journey, then head on over to my guitar school at patreon.com slash Bradley Hall Guitar. You'll find lessons and exercises on not only sweeping, but a variety of techniques and concepts. You'll also gain weekly mentoring from me and instant access to our community Discord server. Cheers guys and good luck.